to the Paint, Rest, Repeat podcast with Roz Gervais and Laura Day, where we chat about our creative lives as artists while keeping it real and a little bit messy. We're here to inspire creatives just like you to push past those boundaries and make art that you love. Let's dive in. Welcome everybody to Paint, Rest, Repeat. We are chatting this week about how to make money from your art. Is that right? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Making money for artists. Woohoo. Let's do it. (laughs) (laughs) Um, So how are we going to start? We were going to start by talking maybe about some of my art for the heart members, because I've been Mm -hmm. welcoming in a lot of new members at the moment and Mm -hmm. it's been a topic, you know, Mm -hmm. how can I make money from my art? I think it's an ongoing topic and I feel like art supplies are expensive. So whether you're a hobby artist and want to make more money to support your art practice, or if you want to grow an art business and like the steps that you can take and the different income streams um, that you can sort of think about to generate more money as a creative person. Yeah, definitely. Because I think the theme that I'm seeing as well is a lot of people who are wanting to, like, maybe they're on mat leave or they're just not liking their job and they're just wanting not to go back to that job and they love their art and they just want to do art and not have to go back. And, you know, they're keen to push their art to a point where it can make some money for them. So they don't have to go back to that role Um, or as you're saying, just to pay for art supplies as well. So Mm. mm, do you remember, do you remember if you go back, go back, cast your mind back Mm -hmm. (laughs) to when you first made money out of art? Um, I think it was in uni and uh, Mm. someone bought like a little, there was an exhibition and it was like a little 12 by 12. So there were minis um, and it was a screen print and um, yeah. So, I mean, but then there was a massive break mm. in between me money, making money from art. So um, I worked various cafe jobs to support my art. I worked in retail um, and yeah, I had a whole heap of side gigs. It wasn't until I moved to Ballarat that, um, oh, and actually, no, sorry, I apologize. It wasn't until I moved to Ballarat. Um, I was really unhappy in my retail job and I decided I was going to kick that to the side and just dive in to make money uh, as a creative person. And so I was sharing my skills and I'm a natural teacher. Like not everyone is a natural teacher, but I really love sharing my skills and knowledge. And I feel like I I am really good at explaining um, steps and encouraging people that may not have created like from beginner, like from a beginner um, standpoint. So yeah, that sort of became one of my main income streams. Um, And then I focused in on my teaching. So that sort of supported my art practice and I was able to invest money back into the creative projects that I wanted to do. But um, in terms of like selling my art, only like, three years ago, like I really got back into it as well. And then, you know, I had the goal for the solo exhibition. I had some Instagram sales um, and yeah, having a physical exhibition. That's when, when I made like the most money from my art that I'd ever done, but it took like extreme intense focus and intention. I did lots of journaling and sort of uncovering all of those blocks and things that I had in place with making money as an artist because there is like lots of um, sort of, yeah, different stories that we're told growing up and some, um, like I was one of the people that sort of took on that it's hard to make money as an artist. We sort all of do. Mentality. <laughs> it's not just you. <laughs> so it did take a lot of personal development and um, intention because it was something that I felt burning inside me. I'm like, I really want to make money from my art. I want to do commissions. I want to paint large artworks. I want to have a solo show. And so, yeah, I sort of like wrote in my diary that I wanted to make 
four and a half thousand dollars from my exhibition and I hit that goal um yeah and it was really like it's pretty amazing like yeah awesome once you well like done. dedicate um it wasn't solely from the exhibition so the un universe delivered and I made a certain amount I can't remember the numbers now um I did that but then I got a big commission right after my solo show um and then that made up the four and a half that I'd written down on a piece of paper of like was what, that, what I wanted to make from my art <clears throat> pardon me was that from somebody who came to the exhibition though or somebody who saw <laughs> saw that I was or? yeah they were saw they didn't come to my exhibition I don't think um but they were in my network and um they saw that I was very active mm. um with creating my work um and obviously they liked my style and they had confidence in what I was creating and yeah so I got a really big commission off the back of the exhibition so I feel like when you put a heap of energy and intention into something and mm -hmm. you sort of work on maybe some of the mindset stuff that's holding you back and put a lot of energy into it that's when you reap the rewards yeah but, definitely yeah. I mean, a friend, uh, sorry, another friend of mine um, who I talk about often, actually, um, mm -hmm. a local Italian painter, um, he's having an exhibition at the moment. And by the time this episode goes live, it will be over. But he's finding actually with his exhibition that it is bringing on sales from he, of his works from his previous exhibition. Mm. So, I mean, he's, he could be thinking, um, oh, this, this particular exhibition is a flop. I actually don't, I don't know if he's having sales from the current artworks. So, you know, I'm not sharing any info. I shouldn't be sharing because I just don't know. Um, but he could be taking it on as a flop of an exhibition, or he could be thinking, well, actually, no, I'm, st I'm still selling. It's just the artworks from the previous show that hadn't sold previously. Mm. I think I'd still wrap that all up, you know, in the same package yeah. of success that like, definitely like would be the success yeah definitely yes, for sure art it's, sales thank you very mm, much you know thank you very <laughs> much uh so if we're uh, what about you like I'd like to know oh. yeah um oh. about like your like jumping into your art making money and the various different income streams yes like so did you did you have those stories around mm. it's really hard to make money as an artist you know, um, yeah, all of that sort of starting I, artist mentality. So I, I definitely had a bit of that, but I think <laughs> to put it out there, to share all, I think I disliked my job, my day job enough to push through that. And so, yeah, yeah that's, that's where my head was at. And I needed art so much that it wasn't even an option for me to stay where I was in my day job. I needed to make a career out of it and make some money out of it um, so I could carry on doing it. So that's that's where I was at. Yeah, I feel like that was very similar for me. Like I hated my retail job and I'm like, I have so much more to give than this. Yes. And I wasn't yes. being like valued in the workplace either. Like I was very disposable. One, uh, I know that feeling. <laughs> I know that feeling so much. Mm. Um, yeah, it's just so much. It's like I'm not being. I'm not being utilized. Like mm -hmm. I, yeah, I just have more to give, and mm. this is not where I'm going to grow. This yeah. is not where I'm going to be doing like fulfilling my purpose. Mm. Um, yeah, I know that feeling. Mm. So, if there are other people in a similar position. How can we encourage them to take that step, especially like, you know, with all the stories around, you know, job security and raising cost of living and yeah, like, completely. yeah, that could be like really quite scary at this point in time. Mm -hmm. I think the key is um, diversity. Um, so mm -hmm. having a diverse sort of set of um, in forms of, income streams of income <laughs> yeah. um, and this makes me think a lot of um elizabeth gilbert's book as well big magic mm -hmm. and she talks in her book about making sure that you have a job and income coming in so that it can pay for your art career and support your art um, because the second you apply that financial pressure to your art it puts just 
basically it's quite a dangerous amount of pressure on your creativity and your practice. Mm -hmm. So I think having multiple streams um, of income that are still art related, if, if you can manage it, Mm -hmm. I think that is the way to do it. What do you think? No, I totally agree. And that's what I've done in the past too. I mean, I feel like teaching has been the way that I was, I'm able to support my personal practice and grow like as an artist. Just so Uh, you know, I'm smiling over here because I've just found, (laughs) I found found chewing gum stuck to the underside of my art table. And I'm Uh, like, it wasn't me. (laughs) Sneaky, sneaky. (laughs) Sorry, back up, back up. I was just a little bit shocked. Um, Yeah, so like teaching, like whether it's group or one-on-one, I work with artists with disability as well. So we're located in Australia. It's called NDIS, National Disability Insurance Scheme. Um, So having that as a basis um, of like regular income that comes in, to my business and then then that supports the painting side and the creative um practice so then I'm able to um create work for exhibition whenever I organize one or um create work for commissions and different things like that Uh, and and what that does is you can still make money out of your exhibitions you can still make money out of your art but it removes that sense of pressure Mm. and I just I just don't know how you'd operate without that you know how you'd operate with that level of pressure sorry I just think that would just be challenging (laughs) very Mm. challenging Mm. some people are all in with Mm. their art though um I feel like it takes a long time to sort of like build that reputation create the different networks and um, either a support from a gallery mm. or retailers or if you want to do like your full promotion like all by yourself and creating like your customer base just so a solo like I think it, it really takes a long time um yeah I think it's great and 100 percent definitely possible oh for sure like people Mm. do it all the time Mm. um and that's the big dream but I think just to put that pressure on your art practice from the get-go to do that Mm -hmm. that's what I'm saying I just think that's just um a recipe for high stress (laughs) Mm -hmm. yeah definitely yeah Yeah, when I was reading big magic that sort of did resonate with me Mm. Mm. um because yeah I think it can take a bit of fun out of it and you know, you can lose your spark. So I think, I think creative people like juggling a few different projects anyways. Like I think it sort of comes naturally to us as creatives. That's true. I think I see, I can't be in that creative flow state, for example, for a long amount of time, I actually find it tiring. Like I I love to create, but then I hit like a point and I'm like, Mm. okay, Mm-hmm. I've got to step away from the easel now and I've got to do something else, you know? Mm. So that variety I think is probably good for our process. Mm. I, I do find the same. Yeah. So what have you done, Roz, um, with all of your different income streams and all the different ways that you have um, made money from your creative endeav- yeah. oh endeavors? My, like, I can have you done make too a, many things. <laughs> li- yeah. I mean, Give us a little rundown. Too many things. Okay, so what I do currently, um, I have, thanks to you, actually, I have a couple of NDIS students that I work with Mm -hmm. um, and that forms a good part of my income. So that helps a lot. And it's also epically rewarding. Um, So I've got that. And then I do also my Art Art for the Heart membership and Mm -hmm. I have my growing member base there and we we paint together once a month and we connect once a week, et cetera, et cetera. And then in addition to that, I also run my kids art program, which Mm -hmm. works well. So I used to be a primary teacher. So it sort of connects with that and my art. And that is also really rewarding because I'm helping kiddos who need an outlet and need to feel good about something. And I'm giving them that gift. So that is a really, really big, it's a big part of my income, but it's also a really rewarding part of my income. So Mm -hmm. this is what I was thinking about when you were chatting about not liking retail and feeling sort of underutilized. How 
I don't know if the word is lucky, but how thankful I am um, to be able to have an income stream from what I love doing from mm. art. Like how mm. how lucky are we? I don't. I still don't know if that's the right word. I, <laughs> because it's I taking am. a lot of work. But yeah. <laughs> I feel um, lucky and grateful and I'm also like proud of myself that I was able to create a job that suits my lifestyle. So I've talked about it in podcasts before, like I have a chronic illness, I need to manage my time and energy. And so I've got like full uh, control over when I um, show up for work and make my appointments and um, teach my students and, you know, set my group workshops uh, so then I've got like downtime to rest and relax and, you know, do the things that I enjoy, um, and look after my health. So, but that wasn't always the case. I, previous to this, like a couple of years ago, I was, uh, the program coordinator for an art program at a hospital. So I was accountable to other people. And then that was still a side gig it was still like creative and, you know, it was a good job, but I just, I really love that I've got like full control now and I can, I've just created this job and it just started from like one person and then, yeah. you know, it sort of led and it grew and, you know, now I've got like four one-on-one -on -one clients and then, um, sort of, I, I do, casual workshops as well yeah a casual group workshops mm -hmm. as well mm -hmm. so that's been really supportive to my arts practice um but I do feel like I am in a teaching mode at the moment and then that's my sort of primary focus mm -hmm. so that's yeah where I am at the moment and I do have a little bit of a calling to get back into my commissions and get back into creating like larger paintings um, and um and doing yeah. a group show with me Laura yeah if you are we have, listening if we have listening. floated that idea haven't we yeah and, mm. and Laura I'm going to put you on the spot because if you're listening today and you think Laura and I should do a group show <laughs> together <laughs> send Laura a DM because over on Insta uh, is it me, is it me that I'm holding holding it back yeah. Um, well, I'm the yeah. energy. I'm the one. Mm. I'm the one that's going. Let's do it. Let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> I am very cautious. Uh, my last group workshop is going to be on September 10. Uh, so then, that's when my my brain can relax a little yeah. bit yeah. and my time and space opens up. Uh, I actively decided that I was going to stop the group workshops so I could open up space for my personal practice. So then that's, um, that's my sort of focus for October, November, December, um, doing that, researching some retailers. And I know you've got a retailer as well. And then that's something that you're wanting to grow as like part of the foundation for your art business as well. Mm -hmm. Like that's another option for people out there. Yeah, um, definitely. So to reach out to places like I'm with art to art and they're really mm -hmm. beautiful and supportive, by the mm -hmm. way, you can head mm -hmm. to their website. They've got a little submission sort of tab. Mm -hmm. Um, and then even, you know, entering the Fenton and Fenton, um, uh, competition and jumbled and things like that. And then even, even retailers closer to home, you know, little homeware stores and boutique, yep. cute little places. Yeah. Um, that's a good avenue as well. Yeah. There are ways that you can do it, um, like a hundred percent solo as well. So then you're getting like full price. Cause obviously you need to consider the commission that the retailers take when you're, uh, putting your work out there. Uh, so there will be places in your local community that you can approach potentially free exhibition spaces as well. Like my two solo shows was uh, in a hotel and the benefit for them was that they got art on their walls for six weeks, but I had to organize the whole show. So there was like a lot of effort involved in it, but I did get financially rewarded. I did get to like grow my audience and um, people supported my art and I did find it was successful for me. Um, yeah. So there are ways that you can do that. I feel like when people see that you are, you are creating art, um, there is like a sense of energy behind it. 
and then Mm -hmm. that can be reciprocated in a way. Uh, Even if it's just an Instagram sale, that's how we met, Roz. Oh, it is. (laughs) You bought one of my artworks. um, That's true. (laughs) On my Instagram sale. That is actually very true. And so Mm. I think that's true. It's like I think where you put your energy, you know, wherever you put your energy, Mm. more will come. And that's Mm. from, that's a whole, you know, universe thing yeah um yeah so yeah no definitely well you sold a lot through that Instagram yeah that was really good too so that was I can't remember how long it was after my solo show Mm. but I had a whole heap of work and it was sitting there I'm like oh like I really just need to like clear space so then I can um reinvest into buy more art supplies to create my next series of work Mm -hmm. so it was really simple like all I did was just take photos and put them on my Instagram stories. And then, yeah, I sold a whole heap yeah, of beautiful. work. Uh, so that's another potential, like a sort of easy um, thing that you could try. But I, I was just thinking as I was talking then, um, if you are sort of a hobby artist and you are wanting to get into selling, you might not have sold too many pieces I, I think maybe thinking about the presentation side of your work and the surfaces that you're creating on, the quality of your materials. Um, I feel like when I first got back into painting, I was getting uh, big canvases from the cheapo shop and like I was just using like some house paint and just random paint and the quality um, was not artist quality. Mm -hmm. And then it totally changed. Like I made so much more art sales when I actually invested in really good quality cotton stretched canvas, um, framed canvases, and even my paperwork. So the watercolor paper, 300 GSM watercolor paper, um, the paperwork was framed. Mm -hmm. And you know, it doesn't have to be like ridiculously expensive. I got some frames if you're located in Australia. These are retailers in Australia. I got some from Kmart. I got some from Freedom Mm -hmm. and they were relatively cheap. I mean, obviously the Kmart ones like were sort of basic quality, like they weren't a hundred percent, but for my solo show, having the work ready to go it's already framed up the customer doesn't have to worry about sourcing the frame or making it look presentable it already had the hanging thing on the back like sort of making it easy um for the customer to sort of jump and make that um make that sale it yeah thinking about that presentation is kind of important too and you want to get those art that but that art like your art up on their wall asap so i bought an artwork recently which i absolutely adore um but and it came unframed and it's sitting there it's so funny i go to my framer all the time but to remember to bring it with me is another (laughs) matter um yeah so if even if you yeah you frame in the budget frames at least it's framed at least it can go Mm. on the walls Mm -hmm. and then your purchaser or your buyer can go and upgrade that frame if they want to and it's a choice they can make but it's still ready to go up on the wall and they can envisage it as well at home in a specific location yeah Mm, yeah for sure Mm, yeah (sighs) oh we have a review oh yeah Yeah. that's yeah great let's read that I we think it's, yeah it's an international um, review I think it is so this review is from a listener from the United States and her name is Verano Amor and I hope I'm saying that correctly and I don't mm-hmm. have your Instagram handle Verano so if you are on Instagram can you please shoot us a little DM so we can give you a shout out at least over on Instagram mm-hmm. and Verano has said I love listening to Laura and Rose while I'm creating They are a pleasant boost of energy in the studio and always leave me feeling more confident and legit as an artist by the end of the episode. I like that they talk about some of the negative aspects and feelings artists get while giving little nuggets of inspiration to help artists both improve their art practice and feelings of self-worth. Thanks for inspiring me from across the globe. Absolute pleasure, Verano. Thank you for your lovely review. 
That's so nice. Um, we really appreciate all your reviews. Uh, Ros and I were just talking about on Spotify, you can actually give us a five-star rating. So we would really appreciate it if you help us grow the podcast by leaving us that five-star rating if you're enjoying our chats and what we're talking about. Um, we're also releasing these on YouTube as well. So send us a comment like subscribe we'd really appreciate that to help get our channel like up and running and um help us get noticed more on youtube and yeah you can leave a review still through apple podcasts but not everyone is a apple um podcast because uh, I'm I'm an Android user, so I don't know how to Actually, log on to all of that and do the review. But we would love to share your Instagram handle and help promote you and your art practice and what you're doing. Um, even if it's a story share or whatever, like any way that you want to give us feedback or reviews on this podcast, we'd really appreciate it. That would be amazing. Um, I was going to say something, but I totally forgot. <laughs> <laughs> something about reviews oh that's right so I'm not an apple human either and um I my first apple review that I left was actually for Susan Nethercutt's ah, podcast yeah and I just as a favor I was like I'm gonna do it I'm gonna leave her an apple review mm. I have no idea how <laughs> and so I googled how to do it I made a new apple account and I went in and I did my little words and they came through to her and I was like, yes, I did something. I supported the art world. So um, yeah, if you can be bothered, um, it would really mean a whole lot to us. We actually have a little link that we share in the show notes um, to a blog on my website, which explains all the steps for how to leave an Apple review. So mm -hmm. if you're a keen bean, if you've mm -hmm. got five minutes, yeah. um, it yeah. would really be amazing. Yeah. And if there's a tech hurdle, like you can just send us a DM or something like that or an email. <laughs> or flail or, your arms and panic. <laughs> <laughs> a handwritten note. I don't know. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> By carrier pigeon. That, yeah. that one. <laughs> Beautiful. Uh, um, oh. So we got off track with yeah. our lovely review from the US and yeah. um, encouraging people to reach out to us. Yeah. Um, but so let's think about some other ways that people can make money as an artist. I've yeah. written down here um, making products out of your art. So oh, yeah. it's like cards, um, prints, or um, getting your designs printed on T-shirts. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, there's a whole heap of different things that you can do. Definitely. Um, so I'm, I'm taking notes. So we've got teaching was obviously the other really big one that mm -hmm. we, we've touched on, but we just mm -hmm. didn't categorize it. So teaching is great. If you mm -hmm. enjoy teaching, if it's rewarding, yeah. um, teaching in the area of art is just, um, well, both of us love it. So mm. <laughs> um, we will recommend that. And then, yeah, products. So products, how would you go about products? I mean, my mind off automatically goes to um, Society6, but you only get a very mm -hmm. small slice of income from that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah so there is Society6, there's um, Printful, but you only get a small commission. Um, I actually, through my client sessions, um, I actually found a uh, printing drop shipping company mm -hmm. located in Ferntree Gully in Victoria. So mm -hmm. if you are after um, t-shirts or mm -hmm. other products and you're interested in the drop shipping model, uh, I would recommend they're called Ogo, O-G-O, and um, they use as color t-shirts, which are manufactured in Australia. So yeah, from an ethical standpoint and things like that, like if you want to support jobs in Australia, you want to support a printing company located in Australia, because a lot of the big um, drop shipping companies and things like that, they're based um, overseas. So for our Australian listeners, that might be something to look into. With, with that, um, you do like it depends like if you're doing markets there is a little bit of a financial outlay in terms of having the stock on hand but mm. um yeah I guess markets are another way to promote your work and your art as well yeah, yeah. Uh, so there's like the big design markets 
uh, that you can do or there's local markets. You've you've done a few markets. Yeah. And I've then done, there's... Yeah. I've done a few markets in the past when I had my screen printing business. Mm-hmm. So I create, did uh, hand-printed, screen-printed tea towels and cushions um, and cards and different things like that. Yeah, definitely. The tea towels are quite popular on this mm-hmm this part of Australia mm-hmm. <laughs> so tea towels are really good the, mm-hmm. I think art on products is a great way because your price point for selling is lower mm-hmm. um, and people are more more likely to buy because they don't need to invest a huge amount they don't need a spare space on their walls as mm-hmm. well so I think that is quite a good avenue and then like you're saying if you're thinking about the market style option you need to have the stock Mm. um, ready which means there's a bigger upfront investment and a risk as well because you might over order well actually that's probably my own problem I don't like having excesses of stock whereas I know other people are happy to have stock like laid out in storage they're happy with that Um, or as you're saying there's the print on demand option Mm. I mean you can even have your artwork printed on products through the standard online places like Vistaprint. I think mm-hmm. Kmart even does some printing on products as well. Quality, not amazing. Mm-hmm. Um, but there are options. Um, yeah, that's a definitely a good one to go down. Mm. What about wholesaling? Would you ever, is that too far? Um, I've never done a wholesale before. Mm. Um, I just don't have the time to service that model. Yeah. I think like you need to be all in, but I mean, it's an option for people. Like if, if teaching is not for them, um, they could replace the income stream with like a few different things and wholesale models like work for, um, some, um, some people. Uh, yeah. Well, yeah. I've got a friend, um, Sandra Gale, you can look her up at Sandra Gale studio and she does a lot of wholesale and she just did a couple of fairs and she picked up, you know, 16 extra suppliers in mm-hmm. one fair. So it mm-hmm. is possible. Um, mm-hmm. if that's, yeah, if that's the avenue yep. that you want to take. If you are doing like the print model as well, like I feel like that would work in a wholesale um, arena and, um, or even like ceramicists and things like that, like they would probably wholesale to, um, restaurants and cafes and other retailers. Um, I guess like the gallery sort of model, um, your local gallery or things like that, like they they are taking a commission. So yeah, to make a chunk of money, like you have to allow for that commission or the retail price, like whatever the people are taking, that percentage off that yeah, but it, com- yeah it's all potentials yeah commissions are tricky ones aren't they so how I've done it because I've got my art now with art to art mm. is I have increased the price of my art to cater for that commission yeah so I'm not out of pocket but mm. what it does mean is that all of my other art has to have that is not with art to art has to have a comparable yes. price yeah so there is an impact you've got a think that one through yeah um but it's I also when I met Philippa I was like Philippa just have my money like you're a beautiful human (laughs) she's so she's the curator um at art to art so you know I'm not I'm not afraid of giving my money and paying her for her help and her expertise and her just fabulous humanness so (laughs) you know you've got to think about it that way as well they do actually need a share of that money to cover the work that they put into the situation and they've got like they're selling it for you too so like that model works really well for people that maybe don't want to do what I did and put all the energy and effort in like marketing and promoting my own solo exhibition um, and building up that customer base from scratch. Mm-hmm. Like that's what you're paying them for. Cause they've got active buyers and like, it can be really quite profitable for artists and like they're mm-hmm. constantly creating um, for, to, to service the retail model. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's really interesting to talk about all the potentials. And then the other one I've got though on my list before mm-hmm. I forget about it, um, is grants, um, and yeah. council related stuff as well, because my art recently is in my local area, um, as part of the local festival. So I designed the artwork for the program that goes with the festival. Mm -hmm. I've painted a piano for this special event, which is really exciting. And the council paid me properly. Like they paid me as they should because they are, you know, a government 
body or whatever you want to call it. So they've got to stick to the regulations and all of that. Mm -hmm. So that's another avenue. You're good with grants, aren't you? You've yeah, got yeah, I have. Um, I've applied for various grants, like when I was working for disability organization so like it was a shared studio and um yeah we sort of got some funding for that but then also for my own personal art practice I got a creative Victoria grant for seven and a half thousand dollars um and that was to support me in creating new artwork so mm. that they're they're all out there um it depends what grant you're going for um whether it's competitive or not uh, but it's worth putting your hat in the ring and looking around for all of the different um, things that are available. So like I'm based in Victoria, so there's Creative Vic. Um, there's also like regional funds as well. Mm -hmm. So if you're based in a regional area, that's worth looking at. And like you said, like local councils. Yeah, that's it. That's a great income stream. Yeah. And I, and I think... I think that brings up as well the whole concept of a re recurring income versus you know, little cash injections. So that is another, we, I think we might need another episode on this, but um, just to mm. look at, because if you're trying to replace an income, for example, from a mm. previous position, mm -hmm. um, you'd need to have as much of that recurring as possible yep. and anything like your grants are amazing and you should definitely be going for them, but they're going to give you just little injections rather mm -hmm. than, um, you know, constant stream of money Botox or. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't had Botox people. It's okay. <laughs> um, oh, uh, another thing I just wanted to quickly mention, we, we are thinking about getting um, a money mindset coach in to talk about all those things, because I really feel like doing that personal introspection, looking at your stories around money, um, looking at like all the possibilities of how you can make money as a creative and working through that, that has like really helped me in, um, you know, uh, making this a full-time thing for me. Um, so and yeah, becoming famous, Laura, <laughs> it's helped <laughs> autographs available. <laughs> so yeah, we're, we're working on that on, in the background. So we will bring you, um, an interview coming up soon, I think. And I also want to do a shameless little plug to say mm -hmm. that I've just lost my marbles temporarily and started a new Instagram account. So if you would like yes, to have. Yeah, <laughs> not lost Laura's your marbles, like, what are you but doing? like, yes, you've started a new Instagram account. <laughs> so if you would um, like to help me to get up past a hundred followers, you may. Um, I am at Ros Gervais Art. And um, can you tell the listeners the purpose of that account too? Oh, yeah, there's yeah. that. There's that. Mm. Um, so <laughs> mm. what's happened over time is that my Ros Gervais creative Instagram account has become very focused on my mentoring and my teaching, mm -hmm. um, which I find epically rewarding as all of you know. Um, and this new account is me visibly and loudly and proudly carving out space for my own art, my personal art practice over on Instagram. So yep. I'm looking at it and taking it very slow and gently and very mm -hmm. realistically, two posts a week, something like that. Mm -hmm. um, but just making that space because yep. often, often it comes um, second to everything else. <laughs> yeah. And it's just an easy place for people to land when they're um, specifically interested in buying your art or getting a commission off you um, or, you know, servicing your retailers as like yes. a point of contact. Yeah. Um, and to like showcase like all of your amazing talents yeah. and oh, all the different you. things, the um, painting styles and different things that you create. So yeah. yeah. That's, oh, that's, that's awesome. One. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, we better go. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Mm. <laughs> so that Catch was your guys. <laughs> it was. <laughs> Catch you guys in two weeks um, uh, with a brand new episode. Thank you for listening. Bye. Bye. <laughs>